All right, let's do some balance sheet practice. If you want to follow along and give the questions a try first, you can find a copy of this worksheet in the description below. All right, number one, what is the reserve requirement? We're looking at bank A right here and we're trying to figure out the reserve requirement. The reserve requirement is really simple. All that we're going to do is take the thousand dollar reserve requirement or required reserves. We're going to divide that by the demand deposits that we actually have and we're going to come up with 20%. We know that all 20% of all deposits have to be put in the required reserves. So how much could the bank immediately increase loans by? In this case, we have to look at the excess reserves. They have a $500 excess reserve right there, so we could increase loans by $500. Immediately, that's how much could happen. In the long run, it's a different story, but immediately, $500 is all we could increase by. All right, now with B, what would be the maximum possible increase to the money supply if bank A increased loans by the amount identified in number two? So in this case, we're going to take that $500. That's going to get loaned out. What would that be increased by? So first we have to figure out our money multiplier, and that's always one over the reserve requirement. In this case, it ends up being five. So we know that every dollar is going to be multiplied by five, you know, as it goes through the fractional reserve banking system. So this is going to get multiplied by five. That $500 is going to turn into $2,500. But it's asking what would be the maximum possible increase to the money supply. That $500 still existed prior to this, so we're going to have to take that out of this total here. The maximum total increase is only $2,000, not the total $2,500. That $500 turns into $2,500, but it only increases by $2,000. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky sometimes with these questions. All right, number two. Let's assume a new customer comes to deposit $200 at Bank B. How will required reserves initially change is our first question. So we have a customer, he comes in and he deposits $200 into the account. All right, this is going to change our required reserves, our excess reserves, and our totals on both sides. So we know we have a 20% reserve requirement based on the numbers. So our required reserves are going to go up by 20% of that $200. So the $300 required reserves that we had before is now up to $340. So we've gone up by $40. How much will excess reserves initially change? Basically the difference between the initial deposit and what had to be put in the vault, the required reserves. So excess reserves is going to increase by $160. All right, assuming the bank then loans out as much as it can of the new deposit, how much is the total maximum monetary expansion to, to be for the new $200 deposit? So we're only worried about that $200. Now of that $200, $160 can be loaned back out in excess reserves. So that's going to get multiplied by our money multiplier, or in this case, 1 over uh, 20%. $160 times 5 ends up turning into $800. All right, number three, a customer decides to close their account with Bank C and withdraw $200. Okay, so in this case, we're going to take $200 away from the demand deposits right away, which takes $200 away from the liabilities column completely. Uh, so how will required reserves change? We had $100 in there before. Now we have to take away 20% of what was just taken out. So we have a 10% reserve requirement here. We're going to lose $20. 200 was taken out, $20 less has to go in the, in the required reserves at this point. So we lose $20 in the required reserves, but we also lose the remainder to those excess reserves. So the guy took $200 out, 20 was in the required reserves, 180 of that was sitting in excess reserves, so we lose 180 to the excess reserves in addition. Now if the customer chose to hold the cash in a safe at his home, what is the maximum total impact to the money supply? So this guy's taking $200, he's bringing it home, He's going to put it under his mattress and he's not going to allow it to be loaned out. It's not going to go through the money multiplier. So we know our money multiplier is 10. We know that the $180 that was able to be loaned out would have eventually turned into $1,800. So this guy coming in taking $200 out of the bank is going to impact the money supply or the maximum potential impact that it could happen is going to be $1,800. It's not the full $2,000 that that $200 would have turned into because that $200 still exists. So it's only going to be $1,800 that the money supply could potentially be impacted by this negatively. All right, last one, number four. Let's assume Bank D loans out all available funds and the Federal Reserve buys $1,000 in bonds from Bank D. So it's saying that the assumption is this bank is going to loan out anything that it has. So how will required reserves change for Bank D when the Federal Reserve buys $1,000 in bonds? So the first thing, instead of having $2,000 worth of bonds, the bank's only going to have $1,000. In addition, there's going to be $1,000 in excess reserves. We know they're going to loan it out, but we're going to put it on the column like this. So how will required reserves change? Nobody deposited any money. Nobody took any deposits out. 
If demand deposits don't change, neither do required reserves. So required reserves change by zero. How much will loans initially increase by? Now, the key word there is initially. We have $1,000 in excess reserves. This bank loans out all excess reserves. So it's going to increase by $1,000. So what is the maximum amount of money generated from the $1,000 bond purchase? So now we're assuming over time the maximum potential. If this $1,000 is loaned out, redeposited back in the bank, everybody puts money back in the bank and the bank continues to loan out all excess reserves or all banks continue to loan out all excess reserves, this will get the full money multiplier. Now the required reserves based on $2,000 is $400, so we have a 20% reserve requirement here. So we have a money multiplier of five, so this $1,000 bond purchase will get multiplied through the system and turn into $5,000. So we don't have to worry about that, you know, taking away that initial deposit from this. It is simply the bond purchase adds to the money supply, as does the multiplier. So it's a full $5,000. When it's a bond purchase, the full amount ends up being added to the money supply. All right, so hopefully you did well on that. I have one more thing, one more video tying to this concept right here, an FRQ from 2016, number two. So take some time, go over that particular question, and then check out the video to make sure that you understand the type of question you're going to see on the AP exam.